All right, in 2008, question number six, form B question number six, we're given this function f of x is 2x over 1 plus x squared. And we want to write the first four non-zero terms and the general term of the Taylor series for f about x equals zero. Now we can go through the process of finding f of zero, f prime of zero, f prime prime of zero, and the third derivative of f at zero. Uh, because this is a quotient, it is going to get complicated and also the fact that the denominator is a function composition means that you're going to have a quotient rule or a product rule with chain rules even for the first derivative and the second derivative, third derivative are going to get even more complicated. So it would be good in this case if we would be able to transform from a function that we know uh, into this f of x. And you might notice that we have 1 over 1 plus x, which is one of our rational functions that you could find by doing the uh, polynomial long division. Uh, remember, though, that it is a, uh, when it has a, a plus sign, the one that has the minus is all positive terms. The one that has a plus sign is alternating. And so that just looks like 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth. And the general term is just negative 1 to the n, x to the n. Or you could write it as negative x to the n. But I'll separate out that um, the negative 1 to the n because that's going to stay the same when we start to transform. Now, the next thing is we can either substitute x squared for x, or we can multiply by 2x. Now, it's important here that if you multiply by 2x first, in this way, when we need to now substitute x squared for x to get an x squared in the denominator, you're going to also have to do that in the numerator. And so we don't want to do this step here first. So we would actually have to substitute x squared wherever we see x. And that would be the same as multiplying by 2x squared. And so we have a different thing here. We have to do the substitute x squared for x first. And I hope that made sense. But anyway, we're gonna, wherever we see an x, we're going to swap out and put an x squared. So we have 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth, and minus x to the sixth plus x to the eighth, etc. And so we, our general term should be the negative 1 to the n, and then x to the 2n. And we're almost there. Now we just need to multiply through by 2x. And this time, we have 2, we have negative 1 to the n times 2, x. And then our x should be 2n plus 1. So 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 would be 5. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 would be 7. So that would be 2n plus 1. And that gives us... Uh, the first four, now, it, we put in five. Uh, it's important to note when they ask for four non-zero terms, you have to give exactly four non-zero terms. That doesn't mean n is equal to four. It's just the first four non-zero terms and the general term. All right, so that would be our answer for part A. Now we'll continue with part B. Now part B asks, does the series that we found in part A when evaluated at x equals 1, converge to f of 1. So what we need to do there is just substitute x equals 1. And when we do that, we get negative 1 to the n times 2 times 1 to the 2n plus 1. And so our term is, uh, the nth term is negative 1 to the n times 2. And when we try the nth term test, as n goes to infinity, we do not get 0. And therefore, the series, when evaluated at x equals 1, does not converge to f of 1. All right? Now, we were testing one of the endpoints here. We didn't perform the ratio test to show that the interval of convergence is between negative 1 and positive 1. But in that case, it wasn't necessary here. We just were trying to find 1 uh, to see whether x equals 1 converged, or the series converged for x equals 1. And the nth term test was sufficient.